Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look back at headsets reports following the coronavirus's impact on the cannabis industry. The stock up behaviors de- that were demonstrated cooled off at the end of March. However, sales growth remained strong in other states. We saw the median same store sales index at about 120, so 20% over normal in Colorado and Washington. However, California and Nevada, where the shelter in place and uh, non-existent tourism traffic resulted in dramatic declines in sales. So looking at uh, this graph here, where the black line represents an average sales day, you can see that in Colorado, Washington are above average with uh, California and Nevada dramatically below that black line. So over that last weekend, there was inventory levels in decline in most states as consumers continue to make purchases that are higher rates than normal, which led to a decrease in the average weeks of inventory for cannabis retailers that had inventory on demand. For example, the average retailer in Alberta now has enough inventory for 4.5 weeks compared to 5.2. So across the U.S., we're seeing in each state, in some cases, individual cities and counties making their own designation for operation of cannabis retail. Across the West Coast, cannabis retail, including medical and adult use, were deemed essential. At Massachusetts, only medical dispensaries remain open. Throughout Canada, most provinces are allowing cannabis retailers to remain open, taking precautions to encourage social distancing. In many provinces, this includes a click-to-collect capabilities for stores. Uh, Ontario closed their uh, their stores, making it for delivery only, and then reopened that back up after some some pushback. So here's a graph for increase in cannabis sales for uh, Denver, Colorado. General fears of the pandemic and potentially stores closing drove uh, you know, some people in Denver out to start hoarding some cannabis. So we saw from March 16th through March 22nd, an average store in Colorado receiving about 40% higher sales volume than an average week. So the potential close of rec stores in Denver led to a surge in purchases. That median store saw a 60% increase in sales compared to an average day. And this was especially apparent in Denver where increase it to average 120% of the normal levels. Looking at pre-rolls in Colorado, we saw an increased stocking up as consumers were faced with the potential closure of adult stores in the city of Denver, which led to an increase in sales, but also interesting purchase behavior. So for example, it appears that many consumers picked up beverages as an impulse buy when in stores and fewer people selected pre-roll products. Previous to this crisis, we saw about 20% of baskets containing a pre-roll in Colorado, uh, but as of late March, only 15% contained a pre-roll. Inferring from that data, it's probably because people are concerned about the combustion and effects uh, on their lungs as you're a little bit worried about uh, COVID and, and its effects. So people are really kind of pulling back. Plus, pre-rolls were a puff-puff-pass situation. Haven't really had that opportunity. There's a dip in pre-rolls as there's an increase in wholesale purchases for ounces, for example. So we're going to take a look here at California's uh, average daily sales. So in January and February, uh, you can see that black line representing a 0% change in sales compared to an average daily sale. So in this graph, 0% would mean sales growth was flat. So this graph is looking at the changes in edibles and pre-rolls. Edibles are seeing significantly more growth and much softer fall than pre-rolls. Most states prohibiting social gatherings. There's just not nearly as many joints being passed around. However, having an edible and watching Netflix is probably a correlation here as well as um, a more bang for your buck. People are at home, so they're going to engage in more edibles and less of that puff, puff, pass, as we mentioned before. So looking at the stores that remained open in California, you can see sales volumes have begun to return to normal levels in most recent days. The last week in March, you saw sales increasing of nearly 100%, so twice the normal weekday. But during that week in March, we saw sales volumes return to normal season levels with most retailers seeing sales that were on average similar to those at the pre-crisis level. This huge spike in California is probably the point where uh, the governor of California declared uh, a stay-at-home order so every everybody rushing out to go get cannabis and then realizing that delivery was still an option as cannabis was deemed essential. So taking a look at Washington state adult use cannabis shops, they're open and operating with social distancing in place. So demand remained high throughout uh, the last week of March, although softening over the weekend with sales at about 10% below normal levels. 
that probably could be uh, due to um, having already been stocked up or maybe just waiting that extra week uh, or two or three before 420. Ultimately, people probably have already bought what they need. They're not going out as often, probably buying the same amount. So those numbers will probably level out with the peaks and valleys. Um, but I think we'll start to see maybe more discounts leading up to 420 with a sharp drop right after 420. So looking at Oregon here, the median daily transaction size in 2020 uh, from March 16th to March 22nd, that median transaction size was over $40 every day compared to 30 pre-crisis. So this represents a 35% increase in the typical transaction size. And that shaded area on this graph displays the 25th to 75th percentile, meaning that more than half of the stores saw an average transaction size in that range. This visualization also illustrates the transaction sizes are larger on the weekends. However, starting mid-March, you saw a weekday transaction as large or larger than the weekends. And that main spike happening right as, you know, California and these other states, Oregon included, had stay-at-home orders. So again, people kind of panic buying, not knowing if cannabis was going to be an essential business. So taking a look at Canada with private retailers in Alberta and British Columbia and Ontario, they saw similar sales patterns to their American counterparts during this crisis on the retail store level. So this chart shows a comparison for the median store sales growth in comparison to the average daily sales. So during this first week of April, we can see sales remain elevated compared to normal levels, but only slightly so on Thursday, March 26th, seeing a dip in sales below average for the first time of the year. More of the same with those peaks and valleys with, you know, sales numbers probably leveling out over time. All right, back to the U.S., taking a look at changes in the average daily sales by category in U.S. markets. Edibles uh, are the number one category being sold, followed by beverages, which are pretty much the same thing. So across the U.S., overall sales increased by 10%. So this provides a good baseline to compare each category against with edibles and beverages and flowers are the only categories that have an average daily sales increase that beat the market at large, with edibles being the clear front rent runner at 28% growth. At the other end of the chart, you see pre-rolls and topicals completely missed out on the stock up surge, both having a 13% decrease in average daily sales. So this implies that customers were not focusing on these product types when thinking about stocking up ahead of the potential period of quarantine. Could be that topicals are available at Walgreens or Rite Aid or CVS, and that pre-rolls are a social item. Uh, and maybe have less of a value at home where people can possibly roll their own or use a bong or, or whatever, but pre-rolls are definitely taking a hit. So this chart shows the percentage of prior day sales. So this shows the daily percentage of prior day sales in January and February, and it's a trend showing the very predictable and regular trend of sales growing on Fridays. It's up 25 to 40% over Thursday, sales slightly waning through the weekend with Saturdays about 5 to 15% smaller than a Friday, and sales generally climbing Mondays through Thursdays. So when adding in April, we can see that things are changing rapidly. So when we add in the data from April, you can see that things are changing rapidly. There's a lot of promotions that are given out and then either texts or online offers for, uh, for pre-orders. Washington State doesn't have delivery, but those that do have minimum orders in California increasing sales substantially. So with a $60 minimum order in California, for example, you're seeing people spend on upwards of $150 per transaction. So there's a lot more purchasing. Maybe that's because people are at home, they're able to try more stuff or they're stressed out, so they wanna buy more. Either way, we'll, we're seeing some, some interesting trends in increasing uh, purchases and product types uh, from online sales during this crisis. So back to Canada, we're going to take a look and see if uh, this outbreak has changed the category preferences in Alberta. So we know in the U.S. there's been a slight shift away from pre-rolls and this trend is present in Canada as well with the market share of pre-rolls falling from 22% in March to 17% today. It looks like much of the shift was captured by the flower category, which saw a rising market share through the end of the month, increasing from 53% at the beginning of March to 57% at the end. So just a, a product shift or preference away from pre-rolls to more bulk buying. And then comparing two of the older markets in Colorado and Washington. So these two mature markets, they've 
seen a different sales trends since the start of this crisis last March. So we find that both initially saw dramatic sales spikes in March. We see that Washington sales are currently slightly above average daily levels and Colorado were just below. So it could be due to the collapse of tourism. So this graph is showing the difference between uh, February and April with beverages and edible sales in Washington state comparing the market share uh, on the 1st through the 7th of February and that of April. So market share for these products increased about 10% in early February to around 12% today. Increase is likely driven by a decreased consumption in inhalable products due to the negative media attention on the effect of smoking and vaping on lung health and the current threat of this uh, respiratory infection. So this graph looks at the sales pattern shift as a result of the shift in purchasing patterns of consumers during this crisis. This data compares sales in Washington and Nevada, Colorado, California, and Oregon markets. And what they found is that sales have shifted slightly away from evenings and weekends. It's likely due to consumers no longer shopping on their way home from work, but rather shopping at times that are most convenient and offer the fastest way to shop, keeping social distancing in mind. And furthermore, the industry shifts to include more online clicks to collect and delivery can be expected as a shift away from uh, traditional weekend and evening purchases. So this chart is an index of sales and the numbers above 100 represents times where sales are more common than before. So we see that Tuesday and Wednesday mornings are seeing significant increases in sales volumes and evenings, especially Friday evenings, are seeing significant less volume. So as retailers look to staff their stores and products look to deliver products to be on the shelves, these historic sales pattern shifts should be kept in mind so that cannabis operators can continue to serve customers during this time of unique demand patterns. So it's worth noting that the Wednesday uh, that included April 1st, had a sales spike that's likely the first sign that 420 is alive and well despite the uncertain times. So obviously expect a lot of deals to happen leading up to 420 with a, a huge crash right afterwards as people kind of stockpile up. Uh, but to see if that's true or not, you're gonna have to come back to The Talking Hedge. So with that, we're gonna roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.